<laughs> right, it's wiring time at DT for my RS3 into Golf R conversion. And wiring's the tends to be the bit that a lot of people dread. It's the bit that people can't stand do and they don't understand it. There's, you know, the wiring diagrams aren't as simple for them. The reality is a lot of people can put nuts and bolts together because it's pretty simple. But when it comes to wiring, uh, it's certainly when you see like a, a massive spaghetti, uh, people just like ah, freak out and I understand why. But it, wiring's my background to be honest. Like, so I quite like wiring. I quite like mulling through wiring diagrams, all the rest of it. So in preparation for this project, I have got to know the RS3 and Golf R wiring pretty, pretty well. Uh, so much so that I've got the, the wiring diagrams um, I've went through them, I've made sure I understand them and then just the other day I sat in my dining room and I pulled apart the RS3 wiring loom so I've got the full wiring loom off the RS3 uh, and then I just pulled it apart. The whole point is that I can identify the plugs, the pins that go to it and then tie that to the wiring diagrams. Ultimately I'm then left with the stripped down bits that I've, that I've marked up. I've jumped the gun a little bit here actually, but before I go into that, what I'll do is I'll take you just through some, some basic um, system layout of, of how the, the RS3 and the Golf R engine is. Now, the, the both have an ECU and it looks pretty similar. This is the Simos ECU out of the Golf R. It has two plugs on it. Uh, the RS3 one's pretty much the same. It's slightly bigger, but and that also has two plugs. Them two plugs, uh, there's the T105 and that's the one that connects the ECU um, to the engine. So uh, on the actual RS3 engine, that is the plug there, that's the T105. You don't have to do anything with that. That just goes straight from the engine, has the sensors, the injectors, all that kind of stuff, goes straight into the ECU. The bit that you need to change when you do this conversion is the other plug, and that's the T91. That's the bit that connects the ECU to the car. Now you'd think that because they're both MQB cars that um, that might be the same or similar. They're not. <laughs> That's the bit that you actually have to completely deep in. For all, it's the same kind of plug. All the pins are in different locations. And then also some of the power feeds for the fuse box is completely different. And then also how some of these wiring plugs are in the engine bay are completely different as well. So you've got this big gray 14 pin connector. Uh, that's the same plug that's, happened, that's on the Golf R and the RS3. But again, the pins are different. Eight pin connector, same on the Golf and the RS3, but again, pins are different uh, and then the fan wiring is slightly different as well but that's not really anything worth shouting about. So the way that I've done this is the most logical way that I can think of doing it and that is basically I uh, mark up the wiring diagrams, I get them in my head, I know exactly how it is, I tie them to the RS3 loom when I strip the RS3 loom and the reason I stripped the RS3 loom was so that I could get the T91 connector from that. The reason I did that was purely because the T91 plug on the RS3, it comes with little blanks for the pins that are not used. That's pretty good because first of all, you know which ones aren't going to be used. Second of all, I was going to use that plug anyway, and then I've just got to populate the bits where the blanks aren't. So I started with the RS3's T91 strip connector, and then I just looked at what the pinout similarities were between the RS3 and the R. I made up a little spreadsheet uh, which allowed us to just see what each function was and then just cross-reference it. There was some obvious bits like the powers. The, the Golf R ECU has two powers, two grounds. The RS3 has three, but essentially they come from the same place. So I used the bits of the RS3 loom. Then after that, it's pretty simple. Transferring every pin that I want from the Golf R connector onto the RS3 one. I see what the RS3 pin blank is. I identify that pin on the Golf R. I depin it. I then just move it over and pin it straight into the RS3 plug. Eventually you'll end up with a completely populated RS3 T91 ECU plug. The bits that are different in the loom that go to the 14 pin connector, they were pretty simple to identify because a lot of them come from the ECU connector, but then some of them come from the fuse box. Um, there's some bits that I pulled out of the RS3 loom and then I just banged them straight under there, obviously stripped out the Golf R pins. Uh, it's exactly the same for this 8-pin connector as well, mainly for the DSG plug, but it's, it's also got the battery maintenance module and also an, an AC pin as well. Um, the Golf R DSG plug is part of the actual chassis loom, but the DSG plug on the RS3 is actually part of the engine loom. So it's just a case of deleting the DSG plug taking the pins back up through the loom 
and then shove them back down through the 8-pin connector so that the DSG plug on the engine loom actually works. Now, you could, I could keep it so that it's part of the chassis loom, but I just thought it's best to just convert it fully to RS3. That's just purely with like feature fault finding uh, being in mind. The last thing you want is like you have a fault and God, is it like Golf R wiring? Is it RS3 wiring? So you have to document that as well. So I've made loads of notes. I've got like notepads full of notes of the fuse box layouts and all the rest of it. The fuse box is worth mentioning to be fair because most of these fuses actually uh, are shared on the RS3 and the Golf R, but some of them are in different locations. Uh, but also there's a strip with a fuse here uh, and there's also like a relay. There's a few ways you could do this to be fair. You could convert it fully to RS3 uh, or you could try and keep your best, try your best <laughs> to keep it Mark 7. I, I've went a little bit in the middle, so I've tried to keep it Mark 7 but with just a few little additions RS3 which I've got written down. So this car will be quite specific with the notes that it's got. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's how I wanted to do it, just so it was nice and cleaner. I didn't want to try and make this a full RS3 in terms of the power. I just wanted to keep it up at Mark 7 because to be honest, most of it's there already. Last few little things is the battery bracket and obviously a positive terminal point here. That needs tied in the fuse box, but also tied to the back. I've got it unhooked from the back of the car now because I haven't mounted the battery. Plus, I, I just want this for testing, so I will event, I will get a battery on there. Um, the last few little things I had to do was, um, I had to change the plug for the Lambda probe here, and then I had to run an extra wire from down here up to that plug, uh, and that's just for the wide band probe. And also, the battery maintenance module normally comes off here and goes to the negative terminal. I'm now going to have that at the back of the car, so I've just spliced them cables onto a, a two-core cable that I've already run through the car to the boot. It is fucking chucking down, absolutely lashing down. Yeah, so the battery maintenance module is going to be in the back now. It just seemed really simple for me to just extend them all the way to the back. So that's done there. I'll, I'll cover that uh, in another in another little episode. Who knows? Uh, so the last little thing then was just purely the fuel pump. Now I, I mounted the fuel pump from the RS3, complete with the fuel that was in the tank, <laughs> uh, straight into the car, which meant that it was going to be RS3 spec. The, the fuel pump power actually comes off the same fuse, I think it's SP10 uh, and the, it's basically the same wiring that goes to the back and um, the only difference was that the Golf R has a 1mm cable whereas the RS3 has 2.5 I think it is or 2mm something uh, I'm just going to run the 1mm and see what it's like for, in terms of power, I would imagine it'll be fine in all honesty it's just like running the RS3 pumps on T for size, uh, the actual RS3 pump has a has a bigger supply but it runs fine i'll probably put an extra ground in there but for now all i've done is just purely deep in the uh, golf r uh, connector and then just repin the rs3s and then check the wiring for the gauges uh, that go to the dash i know that this looks an absolute tip now but this is basically all buttoned up ready for final testing so that's the t91 ecu plug i just put a little bit of tape to keep it all neat uh, it looks like a mess there but trust us, that's what it looks like from factory. Uh, it's just got a, a nice cover on it normally. Uh, but what I'll do is, I'll um, when I've tested this, I'll wrap all these up so that they're nice. I'll tidy this bit up and then by the time I put the cover on here and wrap all this, it will literally look factory here. You'll not see any of this wiring. Uh, so I just need to connect these up and I think we're going to be ready to, to give it a little start, you know. Check out the pile of RS3 wiring that was left over plus all the little bits. There's all my little tags from marking up all the pinouts. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of work and that's went into this. This has taken me about 12 hours. So I sat in the house and I did about two hours just sussing out the RS3 loom, stripping it off, get the T91 plug. Um, and then I came in, I did about two hours just like taking stuff off the R and getting stuff, getting stuff ready. And then it, it, it took me basically about eight hours to, to, to fully convert this uh, to get us to the point where we are now, which is done. Um, I wanted to do a good job of it. And I also didn't want any splices in there that, that, were, that weren't necessary. So th there's a couple of splices where I've had to extend stuff, stuff like grounds, the battery maintenance module cable to the rear. I can live with that. I did it well. It got wrapped up. Um, but the rest of it, there's really no need to have any splices because you get all the wiring that you would ever need from the RS3 loom. So to be able to convert this fully to, to RS3 underneath here, um, 
there's actually not that many splices and that's that's the way i wanted it anyway enough waffle it's time to get this thing tested because I, I think i'll be able to fire it up today you know I, obviously i haven't got the front end on it's no coolant in but in terms of getting this engine running i think i think we'll get there i just want to do some tests on the wiring mechanics tend to connect wiring up power wiring um hope for the best <laughs> electrical people tend to test wiring and know it will be good so that's what i'm going to be doing have you heard the rain it's absolutely lashing down glad we've got a new roof now <laughs> right so um where was i wiring checks done them done all the wiring checks i'm pretty happy simple continuity checks a little bit of insulation resistance testing just to make sure that there's nothing you know between uh, anything so as soon as power goes on nothing should melt nothing should blow up I'm not going to be killing any modules here's a few things that i haven't mentioned prior to getting this engine started up so i needed a new aircon pipe because it was uh damaged when it was removed from the rs3 because they were a little bit rough so that's been replaced now that was like 240 quid plus vat so that was a nice surprise um i've tied in all of the aircon pipes also all the coolant pipes connected up the fuel lines uh so we're good to go on that respect obviously the coolant pipes aren't done because the front end's not done but that's fine uh engines all mounted up lovely both sides it is tight it's tight in there like a tiger I am ready to fire it up though, but there's one last thing that I need to do. These cars are heavily immobilized uh, from factory in both the ECU and the TCU transmission control unit. But for now, I'm just going to demobilize the ECU and the TCU just so that they effectively detach from the car's mobilizer and that will allow the engine to run. So I'll get that done now. <laughs> Right, in order to do this, I need to bench this ECU and get the pins right, so... Uh, goes in there... Goes in there... Uh, goes on there... And then once the ECU's pinned out, we'll get a read of it. Super duper! Once I've got a read of it, I can then... Um, Demobilize the ECU. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, I'll just turn the immobilizer off for the ECU uh, and then I'll also nip out and get a read of the TCU as well. I'll get the read directly off the gearbox by just plugging straight in uh, using me DQ500. Right now they're demobilized, I'll just chuck them straight back onto the ECU and let that flash. What we're thinking about the return to YouTube team. <laughs> I get asked all the time if I make videos and I just I rarely, rarely have time. Um, I think of anyone that does make videos, you've got the time for it. And I just struggle for that these days. But I have thought about just trying to keep videos a bit simpler. I did used to put some thought, time and effort into the video itself. You know, because a lot of content creators are interesting and they make, they make, videos around interesting content but them themselves or their videos are shit uh i get it because making videos is actually quite tough not only have you got to do the job that you're doing certainly in this uh, instance but you also have to try and put effort into making sure that the video is good to watch as well which the two don't really meet unless you put um some effort into there uh but for this project and uh, probably going forward I've, I've just thought you know just pick the camera up stop trying to put effort into you know thinking about this and that camera angle and all the rest of it it might make the video better but um it's far better to just make a video and uh just see how it goes so yeah we're just winging it and we're just seeing how it goes uh let us know how you think it's going in the comments below uh, i'd appreciate it be cool maybe do some more of these who knows anyway let's um let's get this demobilized ecu onto the car right mission control checklist i've got the fuse box connected up I've got the powers, I've got the steam rack, so that's all done. Um, I've got the ECU, which uh, is this bad boy. Uh, and this one. So that's the ECU done. Uh, I also need to connect the grey 14 pin connector and also this 8 pin connector. 
which is here. And these are just temporary, obviously, as we've already mentioned, like that. I've got the gearbox connected as well as the earth strap. So all that's done. Everything's connected on the engine bay, including Lambda probes, you name it. I put some riv nuts in there the other day and I still need to secure that up there as well as the, the wiring for that, but that's all good. I had a rag fill in the intake, but we'll just leave that open for now. Um, I think we're ready to get some power on there. If you are wondering, no, I'm not nervous in the slightest bit because I'm pretty confident that the prior preparation and planning was suitable. <laughs> Shall find out, eh? Right, so that is power to the car. Heard the ECU click there, so must be a good thing. There's no smoke either, so I'm going to take that as a positive for now. I'll just get the laptop. Yes, the car is a tip at the minute. All this is in bits because I've had to put the selector in. Or should I see Carl has. The next step of the pre-start of testing is literally getting the ignition on. Um, again, looking for smoke. No, I'm not really. I'm really confident. Uh, and I'll see if I can communicate with the ECU and the TCU on the car. There's my needle sweep. Oosh. Plenty of lights on the dash. <laughs> Top and bottom is I want to be able to talk to the engine here. Wah! There we go. Class. Uh, fog cords. Lots of fog cords. Let's have a look. Tell you what, let's just clear them for now. And then... Yeah, no communication. Blah, 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 blah. No one cares about that. Uh, Autotrans, yes. DQ500, got that. No fog cords. Sweet! Right, I can't see any cords in there that are going to stop us from starting this, so... I think it's just a moment of truth. Let's do it. How do you like that? <laughs> I want to turn that off for now. Get in! <laughs> Absolutely buzzing with that, yes! So, um, engine starts perfectly, idles perfectly. Obviously, that's with a no front end on as well. Uh, there's a couple of cords in there for. Uh, coolant uh, stuff which I'm not really surprised at because we are missing fans and what have you so I'm not really that worried I am going to look into them cords just a little bit more just to make sure that there's nothing you know really bad with that because the next step is I'm going to wrap all this wiring up uh, and then literally start putting the front end on because that's going to be the next challenge but yeah I'm absolutely friggin buzzing with that it just fired in the life and ran I did prime it a couple of times to get fuel through but uh, yeah it's hardly even turned, man. Yes! <laughs> happy man. Very, very happy man. I wanna cry, cause I'm so happy. <laughs> and just like that, I think we'll end this video on this massive high. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. There's loads more to come, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks very much. See you in the next one.